We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash yttw and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash calltw. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. It is Sunday, September 18th, I think, 2022. And I'm here today with, what was your, what, who are you? Dave, Dave, I'm here with Dave. Why Warnock. am I here? That's Why what everyone you? wants to know. Hey, Shannon, good to see it's you. Functionally useless. We'll do our best. Good to be here. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> How you doing we've never you? done the show. To, we've never we, done the show together. It, it, may true, never be, it? it may never be the same again. They've but, managed to keep us apart yeah, this long. Yeah. <laughs> what a big mistake letting us all together. Oh my God. We'll have fun we'll if see anything what else. We'll see what happens. It was well, yeah, I've it seen was, some of the calls. Yeah. 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 I've seen some too. Fun's yeah. relative. <laughs> Fun's relative. Are you ready to start uh, talking to people? Let's I talk am. to people. We got lots of calls in the queue. Uh, the queue's not completely full yet. So if you guys want to call in, now's a good time, but it is getting close. So first we are going to talk to Philip from Canada. Hello, Philip. You're on the Atheist Experience. What would you like to talk about today? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I was looking at your good. guys' question online. And you, good, good. And you guys have, uh, is the Holy Spirit outside of the brain, right? So yeah. I thought I'd talk about that. So, I mean, the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was baptized, it says the Holy Spirit descended upon him like in the form of a dove, right? So that's the point of the Holy Spirit is its patterns in nature as well as certain divine aspects that, that Christians see in life, right? So I know you guys are always asking for proof, and, and Christians all have their own divine proof, right? Um, that's why we stay Christians, because we've seen God interact in our lives with the Holy Spirit, right? So, so when, when people explain patterns that they see in life, or people come out of certain situations uh, that were otherwise dangerous, Things like that we attribute to the Holy Spirit working in our lives, right? Oh, you keep well, you keep saying right as though we're agreeing with you, and don't mistake our no, silence right, for, for agreement. Okay, right. yeah, that is because uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that Canadian language, so uh, yeah. Shannon's going to have like to. It's the same as saying you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Exactly. You follow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm Canadian. I can translate for us. <laughs> yeah. Translate. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, the the point of the poll question is that the Holy Spirit. Some people conceive the Holy Spirit as like acting through them, right? So people see the Holy Spirit as something that is interacting with them directly and has given them inspiration. And that inspiration has you know filled their heart and given them a burning in the bosom and led them to Christ. So. That's different, I think, than what you're describing. You're basically saying the Holy Spirit is what? Just like everything? Pe like people see like, it's outside like, of it's them like in the world? It's like a guidance, right? Like it's a guidance and proof, right? And as a Christian, you, you talk to all kinds of Christians, and every Christian has their stories of coincidences and things that they feel has been divine intervention in their life, right? Like when Jesus says, "He's gonna go, I'm going to go, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you, right? So he's talking to be people that already believed in him, right? So perhaps the Holy Spirit leads one to Christ, but it also guides the believers through their journey, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so people as I see you say, as I see you saying it, you, your interpretation of these things, and I know I know the scriptures you're referring to. I used to be a Christian, and I know, I know the Bible pretty well. Um, but it makes no difference to me because I don't believe the Bible was an inspiredly inspired book. It wasn't written by the Holy Spirit. It's written by men. That's my 
belief. But I guess what I'm hearing you saying is that when good things happen and when um, our life is going well and it's being led and guided and we're making good choices and good things are happening, then we attribute that to the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Is that what you're saying? Well, well, in a sense, right, you can attribute, there's always patterns and natures and good things that are going to come our way, right? But there's a point where it crosses the line from something that's normal in nature to something that's divine and cannot be explained by nature, right? And when things like cross what? those lines, it used. Well, like everybody what? has their own stories. Do you want me to give you an example of something that's happened to me? Is that what, Would you like that? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. All right. This is kind of a deep one, but it's it, so I, I was a drug addict for a lot of years. Um, I was addicted to heroin. And when I came out of it, a few years after I went on my journey with Christ and I went through it, uh, a few years into it, I had had a relapse, right? And I went and I, I bought a whole bunch of drugs, way too many drugs. It was a relapse after years. And I did these drugs for three days in a row. And it should have killed me. Like they should have killed me, the amount of drugs that I did. And on the third day, I was, it was, it was, uh, my heart was pounding. I, I just knew it was over. Like I did way too much. And I prayed to God and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I apologize. And I went to sleep. I woke up the next day. I was alive, right? I went to the bathroom. I did an injection. And in my injection, there's something called splatter pattern. Are you guys familiar with that? No. So when you don't. inject sometimes, I don't know if it's because you miss or how it works, but you get these white bubbles that will appear all over your the injection site. And right on the injection site appeared a perfect cross. What are, what are the chances of something like that happening? What are like, it, can you explain that with nature? I, I yeah. There's multiple ways that I could multiple, explain Yeah, that. multiple yeah. ways that can be explained besides the Holy Spirit. But go ahead. Yeah. So, to, to so me, you, can, you can explain a Christian on his last, uh, his complete last road, praying to God, waking up the next morning alive, injecting his last injection because it changed my direction, and uh, a perfect cross appearing. If you've ever seen, seen splatter pattern, that is one in a billion that something like that could appear. There's never any method to it. it Did anybody else see the cross on you? Did anybody cross. else see the cross on you? I have a picture. Like cross I, I, took, I ran to the bathroom. Yeah, I ran to my room and grabbed my camera. You want to see the picture? I'll link it in the... Uh, in the chat, hundred no, percent. So, I, I believe. I believe you. You're getting. You're getting a little bit worked up. I think probably because yeah, you're anticipating I, 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 I that. Believe you you. Think, <laughs> I believe that this is an experience you had, but I think that there are very clear natural explanations for something like that occurring. I mm -hmm. think that we I, attribute. Like it sounds to me like you had an experience and you were primed to attribute it to God. So you did. That's what it sounds like to me. It, yeah, I see it's just saying. like someone I, recently, I, I agree. someone crosses could appear. Sorry, crosses could appear on your hand. I agree. I'm not saying it's impossible. What I'm saying right. is the mathematic possibility, the mathematical possibility of that scenario leading to that conclusion is just not well, likely. Like, why would it be? Why would it happening be is after one that it situation? Did. So, like, so, yeah, the possibility I, I, of it I, happening at all is. Well, it, it did happen, so obviously it's probably that it happened. But so what? Here's my I, I can question. understand why you would attribute it. Like mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying. Like I get where your head was at, and I understand why Spirit. you attributed it to it. But that doesn't seem like the Holy Spirit working to me. It seems like a co coincidence that you attributed it to something because you were primed to do so. That's what. That's all that yeah, it seems that's like. What the Holy, that's what the Holy Spirit is. It works in coincidence, patterns of nature. And, and divine situations that change your direction due to an intervention from God, right? If that had happened to anybody else, they would have moved on with life, probably not even noticed it, right? And it happened on my last well, objection. My plan was to go get but, more, right? And, and it changed yeah, it, my entire direction. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm glad your direction changed, that you got mm. clean. But secondly, you didn't do that. I mean, the Holy Spirit didn't do that, Philip. You did that. You just attributed something How to the Holy How can you prove that? How can How you can know the Holy Spirit did it? I can't. I can't prove what I just said any more than you can. If, if we no, were, not. We, sorry, are you a mathematician? We are you? Logic, First of all, you're interrupting me. Stop, please. We've let you talk. Okay. Now I want to say some things. Uh, I thought you Canadians were nice, by the way. So you need to not interrupt me. Um, <laughs> we try to be. Okay. 
Um, Philip, you, you are attributing something that happened coincidentally to the Holy Spirit. My bigger question to you is, why does the Holy Spirit need to do parlor tricks to get your attention? Why can't God just intervene? Why do you need to be on your last breath? You said you were a Christian before. Obviously, the Holy Spirit was in your life before. If you were a Christian, mm -hmm. why didn't the power of the Holy Spirit keep you from doing those drugs again? And you went and did them again. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the only way the Holy Spirit can get your attention is to do a party trip for you, like leaving a, a cross at the 9-11 site where the towers fell down and people get all excited because two of the beams land in a cross symbol and that, that somehow the Holy Spirit's involved in that. The same people say that. What are the odds? What are the odds? How could this just happen? God's here. God's here. People say that all the time. A tornado wipes out a, a city and kills thousands of people and destroys a church, but the cross is still there. And people get all excited because they want to see some symbol from God instead of just God taking care of them. God wasn't taking care of you, Philip. I mean, that's that's the uh, truth. So, I mean, so there's, I'm sorry. there's a spiritual war going on, right? The devil tempts us and God allows it because we're in this world to succeed spiritually. The reason why God doesn't just say, I'm here, is because we have free will. If God showed up tomorrow and said, I'm oh, here, free will. I don't, even all you atheists say, I wouldn't agree, but I guarantee you'd bow. And that's the point. That's not free will, right? So we have free will. Yes. Therefore, God okay. cannot intervene. Therefore, we live the lives we do. Right. But okay. He can I, guide I, us. Philip, Philip, one second, because you're going off the rails. Like, so I've got, a, I've got a couple questions for you pertaining to your experience. So do you think that you are the only person who is a drug addict that has prayed? Of course not, no. Right. Do you think no. that there are other instances where people were drug addicts and they prayed and they didn't receive a sign? Uh, so I've seen it, 100%, yeah. Yeah, so they didn't receive sure. a sign, right? So, and, yeah. and they kept being drug addicts. So what, what gets me yeah. about things like this is I think that people don't see how self-serving these attitudes are yes yeah. functionally what you're saying is that there's something specifically special about me and my relationship with god that god chose <laughs> me specifically when he leaves no, others so out right no, so, so is it so is it more likely that the god you believe in if the god you believe in is the type of god that wants everybody to be saved and wants to work in everybody's lives if that is the god you believe in is it more likely that you just attributed a coincidence or that he's abandoned most everybody else and just specifically chose you no no i see what you're saying like like my brother died of an overdose and it was the same i found some of his prison so that were to god i i understand it right but the thing right. is, is, is we all live these lives and this life is this turn is my life to either win or lose. We, we all get recycled, just like John the Baptist was recycled from Elijah, just like all the ancient religions talk about recycle. So just because we don't get it this life doesn't mean we're not going to get it another life. This is my life to get it. Either I'm going to sink or swim. That's the way religion works, right? Can you so understand why we don't believe anything. it, though? Like, you can, can you see, like, I, can you see why... It makes more sense that this is a coincidence that you misattributed to something, to somebody like me and to most other people, especially other people who are like you. Like, could you imagine if you were sitting at home right now, and this is where I think some of this stuff is damaging, and you were a drug addict who's consistently prayed to God, and you're listening right now, and you hear Philip saying, well, he saved me, and this was the proof, but you don't get that answer. So you're setting people up by saying, okay, well, this is the type of thing that God does. Here's the evidence that God did it for me. How how is somebody else who doesn't get that supposed to feel? Well, you got. Like, do you, you think that that could potentially be something that is damaging? No, you the just thing say? Is, is, it's not like I was special. You got to stay consistent. That was I was in almost a decade. You're saying you got a special sign. Many... Well, you you got a special no, yeah. sign though, right? You said that he put a cross was, specifically. Like said, there's a I one was... in a billion chance on your arm happened to coordinate with when you prayed and you thought you were going to die that's not a unique circumstance other people have that circumstance are in the same mental space and have the same sort of belief systems and undeniably you know for a fact are not going to get that sign that you feel like you got so saying that that is the type of thing that the holy that the holy spirit does is setting those people up to 
severe disappointment and potential downward spiraling, sh should it be an instance where they but, don't get a sign like that, which is the norm? Yeah, but that's that's the thing, right? That's what I needed. God knows what we need, the Bible says, right? He so doesn't know what the rest of those people needed. Signs, but, the, right? but the drug addicts, the other drug addicts who also prayed and didn't get clean and died, you don't think they needed that too? They needed to stay alive too. At the moment, no. Yeah. God's far more intelligent oh. than us. He knows what all, no, none of us are more special. Jesus says that. There is no respect so for person. God was so okay not, with that other, God was, better than God, than God, God was okay with that other person dying, but not you. You're that special. I just explained that. I just explained why we have our lives in, you know, some of us it's this time, some of us it's next time, right? It doesn't mean they won't have another so shot. God's picking and choosing God's you saying that you suffer, just, Philip doesn't. So you are, you believe in reincarnation then, sounds like. Uh, uh, sounds like it, yeah. The Bible certainly appears to uh, insinuate it and all the ancient... No, no, no. The Bible, it, the Bible says, Philip, the Bible says... The Bible. Bible. I'm going to quote you the Bible if you'll shut up for a minute. The Bible specifically says it is appointed unto man once to die after that the judgment. You don't die multiple times, Philip. Read your Bible. You don't know what the fuck you're yeah, talking you're about. Paul. Why don't you quote Jesus? Why don't you quote Jesus? Oh my God, it's Elijah. the same Bible. Elijah, can I, can I, Elijah is John the Baptist. And the old no, Testament he's not. that John the Baptist would come before the Messiah. You, you don't think Paul, Paul is in the Bible? Paul created Christianity. You need to do no, some research. Didn't. Jesus created Christianity. See, that's why no, he didn't anymore because you worship Paul. <laughs> you, you were part of religions okay. that worship Paul. That's your problem, Philip, right? Philip, Philip, oh, you are God. escalating. Right now, we're going we to are I think, out of the but, gate strong. We are out we are. of the gate strong. <laughs> 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 we're gonna we're gonna let you go. Why don't you Philip, call back some fun. other time and we can talk about clean, but, uh, Paul's uh, interaction with Christianity? I am like like Dave said, we are very glad you're clean. Read your Bible, buddy. Read your Bible. Thank you. That's for all calling. I can say. Have a lovely day. <laughs> Enjoy as the as uh, beautiful Canadian fall. As it says in Anchor Man, that escalated quickly. Yeah! Wow! Jeez, <laughs> you were never a real Christian, anyway, Dave. I've so been I told. That, I've been told heard. that before. Yeah, that's not you, the first. You didn't time read the Bible heard. the way that I did. So. Oh my God! Don't read that. Paul. Read Jesus. Wow! 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 <laughs> Yikes! Also, oh, like, let's go. Where do we go from that? <laughs> well, we have an announcement. We have oh, an announcement. Right. I have an announcement. I have an announcement to make. If you like what we do and would like to support us, here are some of the ways that you can support the Atheist Experience and the ACA generally. You can be, you can become a member for as little as ninety nine cents a month. You just click the join button that is down below this video, and that'll give you access to special chat emojis. There's pictures of Dave and I in there. They're delightful. You can, you, you can spam Dave and I in the chat if you become a member. That's one of your <laughs> special privileges. The Atheist Experience is also just one of the shows that's put on by the ACA. So make sure that you check out our other shows as well. There's Secular Sexuality on Thursday starting at 7 p.m. Central. Truth Wanted airs live on Fridays at 7 p.m. Central. And then we have all of our Sunday shows. There's Talk Heathen, which airs at 1 p.m. Central. The Nonprofits, which I've, hear, I've heard is the flagship show for the ACA, which is on right before our show at 3 p.m. Central. And you can also also support us on patreon at tiny.cc forward slash patreon axp support us please we do support delightful us. work learning about how we read the bible wrong because it's always, it always blows my mind the bible paul is not the bible paul wrote more of the bible jesus never wrote any of the bible by the way and jesus never really? intended for christianity to become a thing i yeah. I, I don't know this guy doesn't know shit about what he's talking if you're Paul's still watching, the I'm only talking like to you. known author we have in the New exactly. Testament of the Bible, right? Yes. So if anything, oh, that... you, you think you'd have the most authority, like the Gospels are all anonymous. But it, hopefully, he calls back to have a conversation about that because we did not have time. There's way too many people waiting. To... Yeah, we we couldn't keep going with him. <laughs> Unfortunately, There's some juicy Call juicy back calls here. <laughs> there are. All right, we'll talk to Michael next. Okay. Hello, Michael. You are on the Atheist Experience. What would you like to discuss today? The existence of God, I have proof. Oh, oh neat. Boy. Finally, finally. Perfect. Lay it on. Waiting. Us. Michael's here, everybody. He's got. He's finally got it. <laughs> Lay it on us, Michael. What do you got? Well, I'll say it like this. If you're familiar with 2 Corinthians 6.16, it says, God will put his spirit within them. He will walk among them. He will be their God, and they will be his people. That's me. 
I'm the chosen one, the Messiah. My name is, I changed my name actually to Yahweh, our righteousness. And like I said, I have proof. I have a book coming out. No, uh, we're not promoting your book here, Michael, Yahweh, our righteousness, whatever. We're not promoting your book. Nope. We're not promoting your book today. It doesn't matter what kind of book you've written. What What is your proof? I mean, ever, there's been so many people down through history who've said they're God and Jesus. Um. Yeah. Why, well, why are you different, Jesus Michael? Why are you special? Hmm? That's only 393 year old name, that Jesus name. That's what I've been was praying in. That's what caused my confusion. Okay. Well, well, the word of God is being plagiarized, and it's my word. As uh, Yeshua told Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And in that study, it's as if he became the author of the word of God. And in 2011, I had given up on God for my. I've been searching for him since I was 11, and I could tell you a little bit of story about a Baptist. But I thought you said you are really God. Aren't you that's, God? That's, Aren't you God? I'd, I'd given up on God about then too. Did by you the just way. like turn around in circles in your living room, looking at like, "Aren't you?" Like, <laughs> I thought How you, you said give that up, you were God. So you gave up on yourself. I gave up on God in 2011. I told him, "If I said if you are real, you're just as big a liar as I am." And I said another thing, if you're not everything that you said you are in your word, you're absolutely nothing, a zero. And I, I pleaded with him, and I cried out to him one Saturday, and he answered me in a burning bush candle experience. I mean, it was unexpected, but I, I, I cried out to him with every fiber of my being. And okay, so you had a religious so that experience. Like, Michael, where's your proof of God, though, Michael? Uh, like, where is your proof of God? So, so far, we've established okay. that you had an experience when you were young, when you were looking for God. Also, you are God somehow, but you, I'm waiting for okay. the proof of God. That's okay. what you said you were going to call. Okay. You were going to give us proof. Where's the proof? Well, I can you know, tell you about it, but I can't show you over the phone, but it's the word of God. Again. Well, if you're again, God, you should be able to do stuff like that, right? So, Listen to me. If you're going to let me talk, let me talk. Uh, for instance, the Book of Eli, the movie. You are you familiar with that? Yes. No. Denzel Washington. Okay. Well, it's a movie. I mean, there's tons of movies that do this. But if you're familiar with the Strong's Concordance numbering system of the Bible, what they do is they script out the script, wording it at specific points in the timing of the movie, and you can listen to what they're saying through the Bible. They're they're making people look, they're mocking them and dis making them disparaged by using the word of God while feeding the people in any religion is a bunch of man-made stuff. It's okay, all Michael, we got, Michael, we, 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 we got to, Michael, we got to cut to, cut to the chase here. Yeah. You, you said you gave up on God in 2011. So did I, by the way. Um, but then you, you're also God. And so I guess Shannon and I asked you, what makes you think you're God, and how did that come about? Besides just a movie, I don't. We well, don't want to talk about that. Well, that's part of that's the evidence of God. I, you just don't the movie, the Book of Eli. You do. No, uh, tell it to me like I'm six. Explain it to me like I'm six, because I'm not getting it. Okay. The evidence that you say so you have. All, all the man, all the man-made religions has got people looking at God other than what he truly is. What he says in his word is what he is. And he says, you don't add to or take from my word. And that's all man has done since then. So when I cried out to God, my son, my little six-year-old boy, he actually answered me. And he told me to start learning things, numbers in 2011. And he did. And I did. And he started showing me these things, like all these musicians back in the, when I was growing up, like, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and all kinds of them was just using the Word of God, scripting their songs and such through the Word of God. It's like the RCDO wow. message. Okay, the, uh, Michael, uh, like, uh, this sounds like some conspiracy theory. Yeah, um, like if you're God, stuff. what do you plan to do? You're in Kentucky, it says. Are you going to make a? You have a big plan. I mean, the end of the world coming. What's the next step for you slash God? Uh. To open people's eyes that I was I was uh, on the ship of fools, okay? I was on the ship of fools just like everyone else, but I had just given up on God, and I just didn't. I, What's I your methodology God, for opening up people's eyes? Are you uh, are you making big announcements? I mean, besides coming on atheist shows and 
talking, what is your big plan to open the eyes of humanity to what they're missing? I mean, you should have a big plan if you're God. I mean, other than calling into shows like this. I'm trying to explain to you. I could come to you, and I would anywhere you want to, and sit down. I'll show you how this method works. It's my word of so God. You're gonna, I'm talking. You're going to get. You're going to get out to all of humanity one by one. You're going to meet with people one by one, all over the world, to explain to them the truth of God. It's going to take a while. I mean, I would think you would have a bigger plan than that. No. I've got a book coming out. I ain't. Got, I ain't trying to promote it. I just oh, told you I wrote okay. a book about it. George P. Jordan B. All right, Shannon. I don't know where to go from here. No, I this. don't know where to go either because you you haven't you haven't There's actually no given proof. any proof. Like I just Nothing. I would love for you to be able to recognize that you haven't actually provided any proof. You just gave an anecdote about a personal experience and mm. said that something about something about numbers and yeah, the movies Rolling and Stones, numbers and the Rolling Stones the and the Beatles. Like and that's really disconnected. A lot of words. Disjointed. Yeah, yeah, um, but no proof. If you no are evidence. God, I think that you should be able to maybe take a course on communication to articulate things better. Not doing uh, so, so well. You Michael. can deliver your message in a way that should Yahweh be Yahweh or Michael or whoever you are, you're not doing <laughs> right. too well at communicating this message. Sorry. Right. We're, like one yeah. would one would imagine that if somebody was God and they would be able to succinctly articulate that to people in a way that would be received immediate and immediately understood, as opposed to whatever this is. So perhaps go, get your argument a little bit more succinct. Yep. Good and then give book. us a call back once you Maybe can present it to us in a way that makes some sense. All Sound right. Sound good? All right. Thanks, Michael. Bye, Michael. That was oh, that God. was an that was an experience. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I, <laughs> but experience. you know what? He sounded sincere, so it must be true. Was this our Damascus Road like experience? Do you think <laughs> is that it, what just it, happened it, for us, Dave? It was at least that. Okay. Do you feel either, like you're about to turn? I don't know. Either, I don't know if I am. We're either O for two or two for two. I can't tell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how the score system is. I don't know. <laughs> I think O for two. Oh my god. All right. I have an additional announcement. I have an announcement. If you shop at Amazon, then you can support the ACA at no cost to you. Simply visit Tiny dot cc forward slash amazon smile aca and designate the atheist community of austin as your selected charity and amazon will donate a portion of their profit directly to the aca we also now have a channel that houses all of the aca shows in audio podcast format you can visit tiny.cc forward slash aen podcast there you can listen to all of our latest shows from the atheist experience talk heathen truth wanted secular sexuality the nonprofits, and others on the channel we also have three facebook groups that are run by the fans for the fans that you can interact with the first is the atheist experience fan group at tiny.cc forward slash fbaxp there's also the atheist experience private fan group where you can interact with others without having those interactions appear on any public feed and that's tiny.cc forward slash F-B-A-X-P-P-R. And we have a new group, the Atheist Experience Fan Group, Atheist versus Theist Debates, where you can try out some of your arguments on theists and atheists alike. And you can find that at tiny.cc forward slash AXP Fan Debates. Nailed it. You are so good at that. Uh, I, suck at that. <laughs> I hate you so much right now. <laughs> but you know, a secret. I, I tried to make Dave do the announcement, but he's a jerk. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just no good at it. He's like, like you. I just don't know how to do the announcement. I, it's a lot of words for me. A lot of so words. So many for me. words. So, so many words. All let's right. Let's talk to Steven. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Steven next. Hello, Stephen. You hey, guys. The experience. Hey, what would you like to talk about today? Hey, Stephen. Hi. First, I want to say I have no book to promote. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Are you God? <laughs> we need to establish I'm not that right off the bat. the Bible, I promise. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So, good. so, what I wanted to talk about today uh, has to do with um, death and how easy it is to kind of get the feeling that you want to be pulled back to religion. I've been an atheist for 30 plus years. Um, I know my voice sounds terribly young, but it really has been that long. And um, I also have, have the unique experience of having uh, had a near-death experience after a heart attack. Um, and so I've talked about my own experiences with death 
and as most people who go through this do, did a lot of reading about what the brain does when you're in mortal danger and all that good stuff beyond your life flashing before your eyes, uh, you know, what an NDE actually is or could be. And I, mm-hmm. you know, when I've been asked to talk about it, I've said, you know, this was my personal experience. I can't say it will be the same for you. Um, but I've also had, I won't say arguments, but we'll say spirited discussions uh, with evangelicals in my life who told me I didn't really die because I didn't see Jesus. And apparently the paramedics didn't know that and tried to revive me anyway. So anyway, it won't go there. But my, my, uh, my question really is, um, I know how I have dealt with trying to not get pulled back in because it's very easy to be attracted to the comforting idea of an afterlife. And as an atheist and in my sure. own beliefs, I don't know if there is one. Um, and losing my mother, it's been three years. She died just before the pandemic hit, uh, which I'm grateful for because that would have been a bigger mess, but I don't know if I'll ever see her again. And it is comforting to think that maybe somehow I will, but that for me personally, hasn't been enough to pull me back into being Catholic in my case. Um, because it's just been too long and, and I, religion falls apart for me. So I wondered what your thoughts were on this topic for other people who are struggling going through the pandemic. We've lost so many people. Um, some of us have lost personally a lot of people. And it's it's really easy to kind of want to get pulled back in. And, and what strategies would you suggest to not only in having discussions with each other, but in not necessarily shoring ourselves up, because I know that's not what we're all about. You know, it's about your own personal feelings and journey and how you feel about things, but not getting, I guess, tricked into it is kind of how I feel about it. There were a lot of people I felt around me who felt like I was vulnerable and suddenly I got hit with a lot of religion all at once. And that was kind of annoying and insulting. So I just wondered what your thoughts were. Well, you picked two good people Sorry to, to call. Ramble. I did. No, you're fine. Okay. You're totally fine. You picked two good people to have discussion with about this. Dave speaks about this quite frequently, and I lost my father yeah. last October and have delved into um, Sorry. how atheists deal with uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. But I've spent some time delving into and making public uh, discussions about grief as an atheist and how to interact with it. So I will, I will throw it to Dave first because we may have different perspectives on things. Well, uh, yeah, I've, I don't know... Um, I'm, I was diagnosed with a terminal disease, um, a a little over three and a half years ago, um, ALS. So it, I've been living with that as an atheist and the knowledge that it's, it's the thing that's going to kill me. Mine is a slow progression form. So it's, I've been around longer than I even thought I would when I got the diagnosis. And so I get to annoy people a lot longer than, uh, they thought I was going to. (laughs) Hooray for all of us. (laughs) Yes. But (laughs) <laughs> but I do talk about this a lot because people do come at me with a lot of questions about how do you deal with the prospect of your impending death. And as I used to be a, an evangelical Christian, and I looked at death as just a, a comma, a stopping off point before you get to eternity. Now I look at death as the final. It's it. Uh, w- when I close my eyes the final time, I don't wake up, and I'm not aware that I didn't wake up. And so the idea that you're talking about is the, the this comfort this comforting idea that we could see our loved ones again that we might miss and i have people that i've lost through my life that i would love to see again and have a chat with again it's a very comforting feeling but being a comforting feeling is not enough to supplant the notion that it's just not logical for that to be true and that one, once this once we turn off the lights that's it and i I counter with the idea of eternity and seeing loved ones again with talking about the fact that this life is wonderful enough. And if we get to live, hopefully, if you're lucky and get to live a good long life and a full life and do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live, then we should be okay with saying, you know what, I had a good run and it's over and I'm okay with that. Um, Obviously, a lot of people's lives get cut short uh, and they get ended sooner than they want them to be. And I'm kind of in that category. I wasn't ready to hang up the curtains, but it is what it is. And so my only response to that is make the most of the one life you know you have. 
then you can settle make be settled and at peace with saying that okay when this comes to an end i'm going to i'm going to feel like i gave it my best shot i wrote the story i wanted to write i lived the life i wanted to live and i'm ready to say goodbye as far as seeing the people that we might miss my only thing is do the best you can with them while you got them here and the people who've already gone like your mom and Shannon's dad and Bevan's mom who she lost last year and other people that I've lost I just cling to the memories I have of them and focus on the good things that I can take from that and try to make that motivate me to make the most of the lives that I have still with me I hope that makes sense and I kind of rambled through several ideas there but that's kind of my overall take on death and dying as an atheist yeah and i have a similar but different take specifically pertaining to the idea of an afterlife that i have come to over the course of the past years i've gone through my grief journey and it's actually something that my boyfriend paul said that really and i don't even know if he knows this so he might be finding this out now that really clicked with me because i think that like Dave said, and like you feel, and all of us have felt, it's this, it's comforting to feel as though this life will be a continuation afterwards and things will just kind of carry on as they were before. But the reality, when you hold the conceptualizations of the afterlife, uh, especially like I was a Christian, Christian conceptualizations, uh, like to scrutiny and you, and you see the nuance, it actually isn't even what's proposed. So that idea that we have in our head about it isn't the reality of what's proposed in the scriptures because that eternal life is about worship and you will be separated from people that um aren't that that didn't make the cut also so how can you be happy if you know that there are people that you are in fact separated from that that's one as thing well as the for people me. you might get stuck with <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> right exactly exactly and on, <laughs> and on top of that yeah. like the idea of um, eternity is something that humans can't really even wrap their head around the concept of. And I don't feel as though that is something that I would want for myself or for anybody else to go on for an eternity. Cause it won't be just a continuation of this life. It will be something different. It will be about worshiping and being with God is what's proposed in the scriptures. It's not that we just get to carry on as we had prior, like a lot of the best things about my interactions with people are things that aren't, you know, specifically Christian type things. Like the, they're joking around, they're sharing our experiences with one another. They're sharing our pains and sharing our joys. If we don't have that, like what do relationships even look like? If we are just in this state of like eternal ethereal happiness, like what do we even have to contribute to learn and grow from each other? And that's the meat of it, right? Like that's the best part of the human interaction, the human experience and human connection. And that like over the course of eternity in a state where you're evidently just perpetually made to be happy through no reason other than you just are because you're supposed to be because that's the way it is there, doesn't sound like I would be me, the people that I love and want to see would still be them. And the best parts of who we were to each other would no longer be available to us. And I don't want that for eternity. I would rather just enjoy who they are now and like, and, and reminisce yeah, about I've, that and make I've the best of the experience. People, now I don't want that forever. I'd rather just be annihilated truthfully. Yeah. And I've said to people, are you allowed to be snarky in heaven? Right. Because it would seem to your point that you, you can't, <laughs> Like I can't imagine any sense of humor in heaven. You're you're right. just I'm a kind sarcastic of bitch. Do I get to do that in heaven? And, yeah. <laughs> right. And you have yeah. to watch your exactly. language exactly. and you know you can't drop the F bomb. So what fun is that? Yeah, what uh, aspect the best aspects of the human experience are just no longer the, the thing about you. the thing about heaven that people miss, I think, and, and I know what you're I dealt with that idea of my whole life and people still come at me with that as as an atheist and when I die I'm you know I'm going to go to hell and not go to heaven and the 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 reality is the people who believe they say they believe in heaven don't really have a clear understanding of what it is because there is no clear explanation of what it is as Shannon alluded to we're si sitting around the throne for eternity singing hosanna to a god who demands to be worshiped 
I don't know. That's I don't know if people really realize that's what they're wanting to spend the rest of eternity doing. I don't think they've thought that through. I think they're they they're somehow imagining it's going to be twenty four seven birthday parties and golf and fishing and whatever it is they enjoyed the most on this earth. They think that somehow that's going to be they're going to be transported to some other place, some other realm. A fourth degree or something, and and they're gonna be the best version of themselves, the peak physical specimen, whatever year that was, and they're gonna be there for eternity doing all the things they like. Where do they get that idea? There's nowhere yeah. in the Bible that hints at that. So these folks that just wanna, I mean, and like you said, well, you're gonna be, yeah, you want to spend eternity with that relative, Uncle john or whatever but really was he that much fun to be around all the time i mean you want that 24 7 for eternity no i don't think you do uh yeah. so th these concepts are very very flimsy to begin with yeah it's just a comforting to... feeling that's all yeah because i do like i don't i can't wrap my head around how you can derive joy without deprivation or anticipation because joy is usually yeah. you're anticipating something that has then been fulfilled that you have previously you know been without and look forward to if you're in a state that there is no like you have no expectation that is not already fulfilled and there is no such thing as deprivation like i don't even know what joy would mean or look like uh in that environment or if it's even a concept that makes sense you know and I don't you don't know get to miss, you don't get to miss the people that aren't there that didn't make right. the cut yeah so I, one thing Stephen, if if you get challenged by people around death experiences and i would say this to anyone challenge the christians who are talking to you about eternity and ask them give me a good solid definition and explanation of what you think eternity looks like on both sides of the equation heaven and hell what do you think you're going to be doing specifically for eternity give me a glimpse into that and just have them explain it and then sh you know what that sounds wonderful point to the scriptures that explain that i'd love to see that because i missed that the 55 <laughs> right. times i read the bible i missed that one yeah because i mean like think about it this way too well, when that I my father was a was a christian right he's passed away so one would one would imagine that if he was got if he got what was promised to him that he's in heaven i'm an atheist i don't think that's going to change certainly if i don't if i get hit by a bus tomorrow that's not where I'm going. So <laughs> that means that my father is in heaven knowing that I'm never going to be there ever. Yeah. But I'm supposed to somehow believe that he's also happy. I just it's can't. Kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Like I have a kid. I couldn't yeah. conceive of that. Like that is an exceptionally messed up perception and if to have, his, but we and did, if but his it, memory nice because we want it so badly right yeah if if his memory is wiped clean which i think that's the magic wand they say so happens he? that then he's not himself right. then he magically doesn't remember his daughter shannon who's not here and who's burning in hell but he's able to be happy because the bible says there are no tears in heaven right. then his memory's been wiped clean and you just don't exist in his memories and what he's not himself. He's not the person. So none of it makes sense. It's just, it's mind boggling how much they cling to that. And yet it doesn't make sense, but it's the carrot that's on the stick for most people. Oh too, yeah. Right? And it the fear is, of hell. Yeah. Yeah. The fear of hell and, and, and the you, desire. And to the point that you made about deprivation, I mean, if you look back at when all of this stuff was originally written down and people were, making up concepts of an afterlife, they lived in a very deprived life by comparison to how we live now. I mean, every, there's always first world problems, as we say, but, but you know, back, way back, they were struggling to survive all the time. I mean, they didn't have indoor plumbing, you know, let alone a lot of other things that we take for granted and, and how right. easy it was to be sick and all of these different things. So that, that idea of, of deprivation really resonates. And I, I will say for myself, I, my own death experience, I kind of keep in my back pocket as a last resort to shut down people just because I didn't suffer. Um, I have been an atheist for the majority of my life, and, and I'm with you, Shannon, we'll be partying in hell as far as what the <laughs> definitions <you> are. <laughs> so, you know, but I didn't I didn't have a bad experience, and the, the best thing to come out of it is I'm not afraid of dying now. 
uh, the way I was before, just because it was an unknown, and now it's not so unknown that I'm I'm hopefully not going to pass soon. But you know, um, and it's made it hard in the years since when I've known people with terminal illnesses like yourself, Dave, and and we talk about it. I it's hard because I've had. I don't want to say a positive experience dying, but it was very relaxing. It wasn't painful. Um, I was very fortunate in what I experienced. And a lot of it had to do with luck, not divine intervention. It just was what it was. But it wasn't scary, and it was a good thing. And, you know, with friends of mine and family members who are suffering, I really do hold on to the idea that they're no longer suffering that they've been relieved of, of what was ailing them one way or the other, however you want to look at it, whether they went to heaven, hell, or somewhere else, I know for certain they're absolutely not suffering. And like I said, having been dead myself for a few minutes, I, that does tend to shut people down. And they go, well, when you die, God will do this. And I'm like, well, I already did. And he didn't do anything. And yeah. so I'm not really worried about that right now. And they don't know where to go when I say that. But uh, but thank you very much for taking my call and giving me your thoughts on it. It is very helpful because um, I still run into this a lot. And uh, it's uh, it is it, it. I thought it would get easier as the years have gone by, but in some ways it's gotten more difficult. And I think it's just because of the pandemic, it comes up so much more frequently. Well. We're so glad again, we can thank help. you. Don't, Big fan of you both and your work. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thanks for Don't let them Steven. pull you back in. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Have a good day. See you. Bye. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. That's such an important topic to discuss too. It like, is. Always. Dealing with grief. I, it's something we don't talk about enough. I mean, I wish somebody would go and talk at conferences and stuff about mortality. We should I really think, see if we can draft somebody into the community that can do a good I don't job know. of that. We could call it <laughs> dying, dying Out Loud or some weird name. Like that. <laughs> That's a good name. I say, yeah, that. Maybe I'll try that. Hey, I have an announcement. I have an oh, announcement, boy. everybody. I have an announcement. Do you like what we're doing here? Are you enjoying this show? Would you like to see what has been going on throughout the rest of the ACA? Ha huh? ha. Huh? Well, you're about to. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm stuck on this image of, of Jason emerging from his bedroom after discovering gay porn for the like first time, letting himself watch it with a forearm like Popeye and like an avalanche of Kleenex coming out from behind him. Um, like I said, based on this list, you are uh, uh, currently oh, experiencing I'm oppression. Super, I am super demonically oppressed. <laughs> Step in the right direction. <laughs> Step in the right direction, baby. Step in the right direction. Oh, we're step, step, step in the right direction. Um, there's that. I don't. Dilla, Dilla has a something. That guy. He's talked about this before. I've heard him where he says, if I order a steak at a yeah. restaurant and then they bring me the steak, that's not a prophecy. If you ask any reasonable person, is there ever ever a time when it's okay to own a person as property and their answer is anything other than absolutely no why the f you asked me something like that that person is an immoral piece of and they need to reevaluate their life i like to i like to give rope have some rope i like to push rope can i interest you all in a special announcement we have a special announcement this is a very important special announcement first of all this holiday season the host of your favorite aca shows will be going head to head in a team contest that will have you in stitches but we need help from the community last year kenneth destroyed me so i have a vendetta so i need everybody <laughs> i need everybody to participate because i have i have a vendetta that i need to i need to work out and also apparently problems with being competitive but you can visit tiny.cc forward slash ACA holiday survey 2022 and answer as many questions as you can and then you're part of the mayhem we need your participation so there's going to be a special reward for helping out we're going to select some of the respondents at random and we're going to send them a special gift so click the link and then get in on the action and then you get to watch all of us fight amongst each other uh and we're all uh very competitive <laughs> So it's very important to me that you participate 
so that when I win, you guys will have contributed to it. I know I talk big, it kind of beats me every time. All right. And also on September 25th, if you are in Austin, make plans to be or are making plans to be in Austin, you can consider joining us in the studio, the ACA Free Thought Library for live broadcasts of Talk Heathen at 1 p.m. and then the Atheist Experience at 4 30 p.m. The doors open at noon and parking is wherever you can find a legal spot uh, after the lot is full. If you can make it there this month, we will continue to broadcast from the, if you can't make it there this month, we'll continue to broadcast from the library the last Sunday of each month. So keep watching this show and our website, atheist slash community.org for news and information as we expand our in-studio offerings in the near future. I'm going to destroy everybody this Christmas. Don't tell it's Ted. fun in the studio. You're, you're too competitive. I, I talked. No, I'm not. You know, Paul was on the show. The right amount of competitive. Paul was on my show Monday and we talked about how competitive he was, but I you're, you know, I saw you in the chat. You're even talking about how more competitive you are. So anyway. Yes, I'm very competitive no. about how competitive I am. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun in the studio. I've I've done a couple of the shows from the studio and it's a lot of fun. With I haven't there. done AXP from the studio. I have done Talk Heathen from yeah. the studio live, but I've never done AXP from the studio. Well, I live in Canada, Canada though. So yeah, I need to get down there. To anything. <laughs> that's not, that's right. I live in, <laughs> I live in an igloo in the middle of an, of an iceberg that's floating in the ocean that's where i live choices we all have choices let's get some calls <laughs> all right let's go let us talk to uh let's talk let's do it let's talk to robin let's go robin let's go hey guys hi robin how's it going what would you like hey robin welcome to the atheist experience what would you like to talk about today yeah just so i know i i've seen the preview for the show and it said you know no one has shown this evidence for god in 25 seasons so uh, right but you know i'll take a stab at it cool let her rip yeah so it's a very simple argument i'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the transcendental argument so it, it basically mm -hmm. would go like god is necessary for intelligibility rationality uh rationality and intelligibility exist therefore god exists isn't that begging the question because you have God in the first premise and also the conclusion? No, that wouldn't be begging the question. Why not? You say God is required, which what presupposes would be the, what God would be exists the... in the premise, and then the conclusion is God exists. So wouldn't you need to not have God in any well, of the premises in order for the conclusion to actually follow? No. What I'm saying is that something is is like I'm saying that there is an uh, implication. So if I say if P then Q, P then Q, that's that's essentially what I'm saying here. No, I could I could put it differently. So I could say if intelligibility exists and knowledge exists and rationality exists and God exists, premise two, intelligibility, rationality, knowledge exists, therefore God exists. So that's not begging the question. Right? Modus ponens is not begging the question. But, so then you have to prove the first premise, if that's the case. So you would have to, you would have to uh, if, demonstrate if, to if, me if that if intelligibility and logic exist, God exists is a premise that's supported and not just an assertion. Yeah. So like, I would, I would say something like God, God's revelation is, uh, is demonstration enough. The Christian, uh, by the okay, way. So the, no. so then you're falling back on, you, you have like a personal experience that supports the premise, right? So not logic, like a personal revelation is what supports the premise, your individual well, experience. No. It's not my individual experience that proves it, right? It's, what do you mean well, by when you say revelation? I, you, if you ask, let, let me let me make sure. Like, actually, let me make sure I'm clear. So, um, God's revelation is how I know it to be the case, right? So I know okay. innately, as do, as does everyone else, that God exists. But, but I don't um, know that. So yeah, I, can't say I, I, I don't know that either. You're asserting that everyone knows innately that God exists, but how do you prove that? I don't. I don't feel like I know that. Uh, well, by by when I say that you know, I'm saying you have uh, like a direct acquaintance with uh, with the truth of the fact of the matter. So in this case, that's just an I assertion. I mean, when I'm defining you're it, making... it's not an assertion; it's a definition. Okay, but you're asserting that something is required for knowledge and intelligibility, and you want to call call that God, but you have no evidence for any of that. It's yeah, just because a... it sounds to me like what you're saying is that the support for premise one is that everybody just knows it's true. Are you saying I need to have some sort of empirical um, demonstration or deductive argument for premise one? You have to say you have that? to have something that you have something. to have something yeah. if you're going to compel me other than 
Well, it's the reason that it's true is because everybody just knows it is. Mm -hmm. Well, whether or not it compels you, well, whether or not it compels you is is, a, is an issue that it can be talked about. But well, that, that, that doesn't that about, also like, doesn't support it though. Like, I don't see how you think that it supports it. Like, so the reason that well, premise one is true is because of revelation. You define revelation as well. Everybody just kind of innately knows that this is the case. We said, well, not everybody innately knows that this is the case because we would contest that because we don't. And your counter to that was, well, it doesn't really matter if you contest it because I'm asserting that you do just as a, a matter of brute fact. Uh, and you, can't, you so there not is no contest fact. there because I'm just asserting that everybody knows that it is the case. Nana, nana, nana. If, if you guys say that you don't, too bad. I know what you know better than you you guys do, and thus my premise is supported. That doesn't seem well, strong we can do to world me. View, we can we can do worldview comparisons, you know, between my worldview. I'm still like, you're supporting the premise, though. Like, um, but, it doesn't but, matter how many worldviews the there are. The premise, but the, uh, it's uh, an assertion. I didn't say that. So, okay, I didn't say that. Um, it's true in virtue of the, of the falsity necessarily of other worldviews. I'm saying that we can use the truth of Christianity and show, you know, as an instrument to show the the, uh, the absurdity of other worldviews, but, and we but can't you haven't, that. but, but how, how, but, how, how can well, you, said how you, can you, you did, well, how can you, 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 how can you say that you can prove the truth of Christianity and refute other worldviews? You haven't done that. No one has. Yeah. So the falsity of other worldviews that, that Okay, so the falsity of other worldviews fundamentally would just be in virtue of the truth of the Christian worldview because the Christian worldview, if it was true, it would necessarily be true because of the nature of God being that which is metaphysically primary. But um, you're you're, uh, you're, just, I, you're using word salad you, again, you, Robin. Robin, you're just using word salad. You're saying the truth of Christianity would reveal itself because it's just obviously true, and since it's obviously true, said. all the other worldviews are false. So tell me what you said again. That's not what I just said. No. Okay. So what tell me what you just that, said. What I, yes. So what I what I said was that if Christianity were, were, were to be true, it would be necessarily true because of the nature. Okay. Of, uh, you're of still God. having to start with if it's true. Now you're saying if it's true, then it would be necessarily true. I could say that about any worldview. If this is oh, actually oh, yes, true, actually, it would be necessarily true. So you still haven't proven yeah. that Christianity is true. So prove it. Okay, so let me maybe 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 I'm not understanding what your standard of proof is. Are you saying that you need a, an empirical demonstration to believe something to be true, or like an argument or something? Or what are you saying? Yeah, I need evidence. Yeah. Evidence. Something other than an assertion. Something so other than an assertion. Believe, exactly. So everything. So everything you believe is on the virtue is on the basis of a, of an argument, or empirical. It's on the basis of so evidence. Evidence. Proof. Okay, so like you believe presumably that causality is real, that there's a cause and effect relationship between things. What's your proof for that? I didn't say I believe that. Why are you, so you, why don't are you believe, telling do you me what I believe? Do I believe what? Presumably. Do you believe that uh, causality is real? Explain causality so that I understand what you're talking about. You yeah, think, do I believe that everything is caused by something else? Event. I I, I honestly don't know. Do you believe... Do you believe I, I, I honestly don't know. Don't know. I haven't. I don't know. What does it matter? Okay. What does so it then, matter in terms of whether well, Christianity is true or not? Why don't you? You're the one making not, the claim. Not, Why I'm don't not, you I'm, prove? I'm ask, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm asking. The reason I'm asking. Robin, is you're levying against me a standard of proof that I don't think you. I am. No, I'm not making a claim. You're making a claim that Christianity is true. We're asking you to show us evidence. That's that simple. Again, you're going down rabbit trails evidence, that don't matter. So the evidence I've, I've already presented the argument and the evidence to you. You don't you don't accept the evidence, and so now I'm trying to figure out why you don't accept the evidence, and I'm trying to I'm trying to see if you're consistent with the standard of proof. You're so I feel, you, like right? I, you I feel like I I feel like I articulated you to you evidence. that your evidence was an assertion. Yeah. So my standard of proof is like would it I agree. I'll, would I'll be, piece of evidence would exceed assertion. just a just a bald assertion, which is which is what all, you're all evidence is assertion. All evidence. All evidence Support. is assertion. Well, yes. evidence evidence varies in in you know degrees of veracity though, right? Like you're not you, not all evidence is good evidence, right? Like, I think you and I would probably agree that there there's things that we could say are That's evidence towards right. supporting something that are that vary in degrees. So like there could be good evidence for something, and there could be 
you know, not as great evidence for something, but it, we, we might still consider it evidence, evidence or something, right? Would, would, would innate knowledge be good evidence? When you say innate knowledge, so you mean that you're you're born with this knowledge. That's it. That it's just a, yeah. a matter of mm -hmm. fact. That's uh, no, I don't think that that is something that is good evidence mm -hmm. at all. Why not? Like just Why innate not? knowledge without any additional support. And also you would have to demonstrate that it was in fact the case that it's innate knowledge. And I don't think that you've no, gotten to that you, far. I didn't, that's, whether or not you're demonstrating it is different. I asked, is innate knowledge in and of itself? Whether, whether, I mean, the fact is that- it good evidence is what you asked. And I said, world, no. Yeah. It's not good evidence. Why not? It could be considered evidence, I but mean, I don't think it, it's good evidence. No. There are, because there you are being correct. Like the function no, of our, like no our cognitive probably. function is such that we, we are consistently incorrect about our perceptions of the world. Yes. Uh, and we need constant no, what, reinforcement for, for that to be accurate. What is innate knowledge? I don't think, yeah, go ahead. Innate, innate knowledge, knowledge would be that you, you'd know this, you'd know this infallibly, right? So just be a product of your, of the basic fact that you're. What, you're, what if two people disagree on what they know? What if two people disagree on what they believe? <laughs> What they believe is innate knowledge. One person says this is innate knowledge. The other person says, no, I have this innate knowledge. And those two knowledges disagree with one another. Which one is true, Robin? Well, that's, How do we determine I, I, I don't, what's I, true? You haven't, give, you haven't given me any more information. But the, the, the bottom line here is when I asked Shannon and you if innate knowledge would be good, good uh, evidence, you, tell, you said no. And what right. I'm asking you clearly, you know, how, how it is the case that that's not true or how we would not. I have... Good I have innate evidence. I have innate evidence. It wouldn't be good evidence because you you know. Okay. Or innate knowledge. No, I, I, can, I can maybe elucidate. So what when I say I don't think it's good evidence, I, one of the reasons that I don't think it's good evidence is because I don't actually think that innate knowledge is really a thing. Like innate knowledge of, like you can, you can feel as though you like innately know something. Right, like you can feel as though that is the case, but Being I would need in order. In order but please allow me to finish the explanation, and then maybe we'll be on the same page. Maybe you'll understand what I'm attempting to say a little bit better if you allow me to finish. So, when you say that there is innate knowledge, I first would need you to demonstrate that it is the case that it is universally like innate that so that everybody has this knowledge as a base. Something other than an assertion would be required for that. A defeater to that would be anybody who disagrees i think at all and also mm -hmm. cognitively i don't think innate knowledge is even really a thing you can feel like an innate knowledge that comports with reality that we would define as truth that is like demonstrable and provable and is in line with reality like i don't think that's the case i don't think we are born knowing God, especially specifically the Christian God, um, exists, which is what it seems to be you would need to have innate knowledge of, unless I'm, under I'm misunderstanding what you're saying we have innate knowledge of. Like, what do you think we have innate knowledge of? Like, everybody's born universally. Uh, they know this doctors. to be the case. Go ahead. You have innate knowledge of we what? Have, we have innate of God, of, of the laws of logic, things like that. Like, you know, uh, he's a... I don't I don't agree. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree that we have innate knowledge of God. How do you define God? I, I, I've said earlier, I mean, I said to the onset of the conversation, I'm, I'm a Christian, so I believe in the Christian God. Okay, why do we, why do you assert that without evidence that we all have innate knowledge of this Christian God? Because well, you want it to be so. Be without an evidence because it, it would be the case that, so, you know, I do have knowledge of this because god furnished me with this knowledge right? i have so, i have innate knowledge that knowledge. zeus is real i have innate knowledge that zeus is the true god and we should all worship him i know this okay. within well, me then, how do you, you how do you, you argue that world, you compare it yeah so we, we could we could compare the two worldviews and see what worldviews have nothing to do knowledge. with it okay. there are a whole that, group of people no, because, there are a whole because, well can i finish can i finish because I'm, I'm almost done i'm almost done okay um it would matter because whatever you claim about something, so in this case it would be innate knowledge, you're going to have entailments. And those entailments are either going to be consistent with each other and with the world, or they're not. So if, if you're going to tell me that you believe that Zeus, you know, in the classic mythology, 
is who gave you this innate knowledge. We can look and see, okay, is this actually true? And if it's Wouldn't not, the fact that those entailments are, are defeaters to the innate knowledge be evidence against your initial claim that innate knowledge was good evidence? Mm -hmm. Because you're saying that if we do a world, no, because it's, it's at that point, at knowledge. that it's point in time, we're doing a worldview knowledge. comparison, and he's saying my innate knowledge is that Zeus exists. And you're saying, well, we do a worldview comparison, and I feel as though if we do a worldview comparison, my worldview is defeater to what you've asserted as innate knowledge. Therefore, your innate knowledge is not good evidence. Which means that wouldn't that mean like it seems, for it anyone to me anyone. that that means that you can't just say that the basis of the premise that I'm attempting to support is innate knowledge because innate knowledge in and of itself is good evidence because you've just admitted that you require more. No, 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 no. It's not what's happening here. Um, yeah, it, it, it really it, is. Yeah, the person who's claiming the person who's claiming knowledge of Zeus doesn't actually know that Zeus exists because he doesn't exist. That's an assertion. He's claiming because, that he has Because knowledge. you're back to my innate you, knowledge. By, by, by that same, no, by that same point, token, I that, can say to you that, that you don't have evidence that your Jesus exists. You just don't. You don't have evidence not, that the Christian not, God is real. Any more than I do that Zeus I, I is real. It, I already gave it. I already gave my evidence. You didn't accept the evidence, which is different. The transcendental argument right. for God. I don't. Was can, your you're, you're right. Then we can, so like you're you absolutely right. I do not accept your evidence. Your evidence the evidence that assertion. you gave was okay. the tag argument. The tag argument, it, the, like we're still on supporting premise oh. one of the tag right. argument, but you're referring to that as your evidence for God as though that assertion was accurate. And we're saying we don't feel as though premise one of that argument is supported. You say, well, it is supported because innate knowledge is actually the evidence for it through revelation. That's how we know. And we said, well, explain to me how innate knowledge is evidence. What if I said that I have innate knowledge that Zeus is, in fact, the God? And you said, well, if we do a worldview comparison, that will be a defeater to your innate knowledge. But also somehow innate knowledge is the support that I require and is fine for me. And that is what supports premise one, which is my evidence for God. Do you feel now like I'm listening? No, you are listening. I was just like you, okay. the conclusion, some of the conclusions you're drawing is just it's not it just doesn't follow up, right? Because in the case that the the worldview of Zeus has been disproven, right? Because we're saying you're 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 granting that we've done the worldview comparison, right? That's what you just said, and we've disproven Zeus, right? So in that in that scenario, the person who you're missing the Zeus point would not have actually the person the person who believed in Zeus would not have had innate knowledge of Zeus, okay? But, okay. but, but furthermore, right, furthermore, in this case, right, when, when I appeal to my innate knowledge and you say you need further demonstration, um, I'm curious as to whether or not you're consistent with that standard, right? Do, do you need an argument for, for everything you believe? I, I would hope, and if you're careful, you would say no. And maybe, maybe, maybe you think so. You do. And it I'd would be my preference that I believe true okay. things, and in order to believe true things, I think that they would be best supported by a high, like a, an epistemology that allows for the incorporation of external evidence, uh, mm -hmm. in order to to make sure and test and validate that what I do believe is true. I will grant that as humans, we very often believe things that are incorrect. Uh, that's our innate disposition, in fact, is to kind of be pattern seeking and come to incorrect conclusions. So I would say that there are there's a strong likelihood that I, like anybody else, probably have some beliefs that are false, uh, but that I would hold them up to external evidence in order to test their veracity yeah. and then change the the schematics of of what I believe in order to incorporate incorporate that new information. I'm always willing to change my mind. In fact, I did. I used to believe that the Christian God was real. I used to believe that that worldview was the only accurate one and every other one was wrong. But I came to the conclusion that I did not have enough evidence to support that, regardless of how much I innately knew that it was true. That's my point. It's okay. not enough to that's innately know point. it. So... I don't see I don't, how maybe, you maybe we're not maybe there's a disconnect between our, our definitions of innate knowledge but if if um if, if we're taking you know what shannon and you said right mm -hmm. it just seems to be you it seems like you're going to run into a problem if you're going to say that you need a deductive argument or but empirical demonstration for, for every well, i we guess you say, say <laughs> no you, you're just saying you that you say don't that. need okay, evidence so in principle so in principle there is no in principle there's no problem with me presenting something to you that doesn't have, like, for example, when I say I know that God exists, 
in principle, there's nothing wrong with me not providing an empirical or deductive no, argument. No, you, not, you can not believe right. whatever you want. You're just not going to convince also, us. That That's maybe, the problem. You're trying to convince other people. Arbitrary. Maybe I can more succinctly like, well, articulate you'd be arbitrary what I said because prior, you, which was what I, what, I, what I said prior is that what things that I believe could potentially be false, right? They could potentially be false, but I that doesn't mean that I don't believe them. I didn't clearly, clearly I didn't require a deductive framework that has external evidence to have every belief that I have. But I think that the best way to test the veracity to ensure that what the things that you believe are true are to incorporate external evidence and, 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 and test them out to make sure that, you know, they are accurate. I can't, I can't think of another way aside from that to test their accuracy. Like you did a worldview comparison, for example, and I do understand that what you're like, so then you said, well, the person who said, who asserted Zeus because we refuted it just doesn't have innate knowledge. So what you're saying is, it seems to me as he though like wrong. you've stuck right. your flag in innate knowledge mm -hmm. and you've said, well, uh, I've laid claim to innate knowledge. Like the Christian worldview is innate knowledge. All other worldviews don't pass the smell test for me. Therefore, I'm just saying mine is innate knowledge. And that means that it's evidence. But, well, it would be evidence but how you, but how you right? discounted the Zeus one though, right? And said that you, now you don't feel like the Zeus one is innate knowledge was that you kind of tested that hypothesis and found it lacking. Like, wouldn't you think that Christianity, in order for it to raise to the level of innate knowledge, would have to do the same thing? Which is kind of what I'm saying. I'm saying that in order for something to rise to like a really high bar of truth and knowledge, that I, I could, I feel like I can like really firmly stick a flag in it. The best way to do that is to do what you did with with Zeus and what you should do with Christianity, and you know. Find ways well, to test it out between, between the Christian God and there's, there's key differences and important differences between the Christian God and Zeus that I think both of us, all of us, even the ones who are listening, are aware of. Okay, like oh yeah, example, Zeus Christian, is not a good Christian example, God. right? Yeah, right. right. But I mean, I, I get the. I mean, if they want to do Christian like, God, Zeus is, this is irrelevant to the point that I was making, though, which is like that the process that you went through to discount that yeah. is the same process that I'm saying I. And we all should go to in or like in order to really like firmly hold any beliefs. That doesn't mean that that is what we do. Like innately, we do something different. Like we acquire beliefs not through the best possible practices, but we should have an eye towards. And if we are claiming things and asserting truth, they should hold up to scrutiny. We shouldn't what just would assert. It take? Well, oh, you're doing the same truth thing. That's is the problem. The thing is that you're you're doing you're doing the same thing is in that you are going to be fundamentally question begging against your entire system. That's that's what you do, and that's what the other hosts, you know, both hosts, you you both do that, okay? Because you, you almost you just you come just short of admitting that you do admitting what. Are you just doing it? I know you are, but that's what you, am I question. in this instance? Because we're still on. No, I thought we no, were still on premise one, and I was trying to. That. It sounds I'm like not you doing are. that. I, I accept <laughs> that the Christian. I, I accept that the Christian God's revelation is, is where it's going to bottom out. But it seems like you want something more. More. Well, okay, well that's our difference then. Like you're well, that's saying, the, that's you're the saying point. this is where I it bottoms it. out, and I'm saying, yeah. okay, well that's. You I don't, don't need any enough. empirical you're evidence it's to good believe enough what for you me, believe. Which fine. And I do. And so there are a lot of people who need more evidence than apparently you do. I'm as I'm wondering what it would take for you. What would it? Would there be anything that would come across your horizon that would come through your life that would convince you that you've been wrong about this Christian God? What would it take? Um, if, I, if, I, if I had innate knowledge, uh, what, what would the answer to that question be? No, You right. could come to the conclusion that your innate knowledge was incorrect, just like the person who thought no, he had innate, innate knowledge. knowledge. It wasn't right. innate knowledge. Well, it, it would come to be, be yeah, you knowledge. would come, it wasn't then you would come to the conclusion mistaken. that you didn't have innate knowledge and that you were mistaken. No, but so then you, the problem the problem you're doing, you're running an external critique. You're not actually running an Could you not, ever not be speaking. mistaken, just, Robin? Just, could could you no, be mistaken? No, Is it possible? No. If, okay, no, then if Christianity was thanks true, for calling. Not be, but like Thanks for calling. You proved God. You got us. <laughs> Call the, well after, this has gone exceptionally long. So we do have we do have a bunch yeah, more we got calls. A lot of calls. This was one of the this was one of the more 
calm presuppositional dialogues I've had. So thank you for that, Robin. Sometimes yeah. they escalate the to a The problem point with that, though, is if you, if you, so, if I have you a can't, case, Robin. Thank you. Call back yeah. again sometime. Bye, Robin. If you can't, if there's nothing that could convince you that you were wrong, then you are stuck in your certainty and there's really no point in having a conversation like, I, with you. I think where we were circling the drain though, which was frustrating to me is like he would, he was, he was willing to grant that somebody could think that they have innate knowledge and be incorrect, right. but not him for, for every other instance, <laughs> but not him. Yeah. And when I find, when he That's finally it admitted like to me, at least when he finally admitted that he could never be wrong under any circumstance because he has this magical innate, innate knowledge, then Everyone else can be wrong about their conclusions. Yeah, which, but I him. mean, like that, that's fine. That's like, problematic that's good enough for you. Then that's yeah, good enough for that's you. That's problematic. Not good enough for me. And I don't think that it should be accepted as good enough. Um, no. And that's where he's. Yeah. That okay. Much. Enough about that. Let's move on. Anywho. <laughs> anywho. <laughs> anywho. Let's have. <laughs> do you want to pick or am I picking? Oh, where do we go? Where do we go? You, where do you, we go? You pick. I, I don't know. I'm just I going down the line. Kelly. God based physics. Yeah, go Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, hey, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for calling the atheist experience. What would you like to talk about today? Hey, thanks so much for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Um, okay. you're, you're hey, welcome. The first thing I want to do is, if if I can, um, yep. address Michael. Uh, Michael, I'm a theist. Please, Michael, don't come in and represent Christianity anymore. That was absurd. <laughs> Not God. A little oh, bit. Yeah. Please, a little bit. Don't worry about Michael though. Let's let's talk about what's up with you, Kelly. What's on your <laughs> mind? Let's talk about me. That's fine. I just sat here and listened and I thought, oh my goodness, what is that man doing? <laughs> um, okay. So anyway, I'm here to uh, make the case for the existence of God. And it's gonna be more of a um I don't know what you would call a physical evidence, physical approach to evidence that I want to make. Okay. So we'll make it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, first of all, I, I'm, I'm only here for the existence. I'm only here to make the argument for the existence of God. I'm not arguing Christianity. That's a completely different argument. So right. I hear that. I heard you guys, or maybe Robin did. I don't know. And it ventured into that. And that's just, those are two different arguments to make. So I'd be happy okay. to do that, but if we can... Well, no, why don't we, God, we're kind of short on, we got a lot of callers and running out of time, so just go ahead and make your make your specific argument, not talk about everybody else. How about that? All right, so it's David and Shannon, right? Let me just make it sure mm -hmm. I get the names right. Okay, so we both have hypotheses. You have an atheistic hypothesis, and I have a theistic hypothesis. hypothesis. Both of mm -hmm. us have to reach into reality and see if our hypothesis is true. Both of us have to do that. So these are the attributes that I believe God has to have. If you're going to make the, the claim that God is, it does exist, then these are the necessary aspects of God. A necessary existence, independent of cause, can create, can choose to do so, and also has the free will and intention. Those are my aspects of God. So... Um, I think we can say that existence is a fact. We do actually exist. And our existence is dependent, not independent. Would you agree? Dependent mm. on... Yeah, dependent on what? My point is, is that you guys both have dependent. They're called parents. So, and so do I. I'm just saying that everything here is dependent on positive. So had something preceded us, we would not have, we wouldn't be here. Had something not preceded us rather. So I'm sorry. One more here. time. I didn't hear you. We are basically saying had some, some I didn't, I didn't hear set you. of circumstances not preceded our existence. We wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah. That's what, that I, that's saying? the argument I'm making. Yeah. Yeah. I, I okay, see what I you're saying. Would yeah. we agree? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so my first point is um, important. Reality can, can't exist only on dependent causes. That is the problem as it depends on unending series of events, which inside oh. time is simply problem so problematic. So this is just like the contingency argument, so, right? Yeah, if you want to call it that, that's fine. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what most and of we the are dependent. apologists <laughs> call it when they use it. 
argument for contingency. Yeah, hey, there I must mean, be an on cause, cause, prime mover, that sort argument. of thing. Is that where this is all the terminus of this is ultimately going to be? You know, there must be an on cause, cause, prime mover sort of deal. Okay. Yeah. You've heard is that, the is that, is right that where we're yeah. ultimately yeah. landing? I'm not the only one ever made it. So, yeah. I'm not the only one that's ever made that. So, yeah, I, I gather you guys probably heard it before. Once or twice, yeah. <laughs> so okay. often. So yeah. I guess. Okay, I get it. Yeah, right. that's fine. Yeah. But here's my here's my question though. The the premise is that we are dependent, and if you go backwards, you know, you had a parent, mom and dad, whether they knew each other, or whether they intended to have you or not. Yeah. It's really not the question. You had one, and as you right. move back, that number gets smaller. That's just math. The exponential growth as you move backwards, exponential, un, I guess you call it ungrowth. I don't know if that's true. But anyway, you come back to the point where you have a first. I believe that's sure. Reasonable. So I guess, okay, I guess where I go with so this. My question is here's. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I'd like to hear your here, question first, question actually. Is, and, and it's the it's the it's the same question you've heard a thousand times, chicken or the egg question. So where do you where do you guys fall on that on that idea? Because I believe it's valid. So do you want? I've got, I have thoughts, but if you want to go first, Dave, I mean, I, I'll give you my thoughts. You may not like them, but these are my thoughts about okay. that. I already hate it. <laughs> well, you probably will. <laughs> my thought on that is, who cares? Oh, dude! Who I, cares? Now you got two against one, man. Well. My thought on that is who cares? Because whether how we got here, I, I really find that question irrelevant to helping us deal with what we're doing here. We are here. It's like you said, I was born from two parents coming together. I understand that. What those parents were like and what they're doing now and whether I get along with them and whether we have a good relationship or not, or whether they're still alive or dead is not the tantamount question. The tantamount question is, what am I doing with this life that I have? I am here now. How I got here becomes irrelevant at some point. We argue over and over again about there being a God. And uh, like you said, you weren't arguing for the Christian God. And I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, unless we're arguing, unless we're talking about a specific God and how this God is supposed to interact with his creation, us, humanity, it becomes pretty irrelevant at some point. If there was something that started everything and we are still figuring these sounds out and we're learning more all the time about the origins of the universe and these kinds of things, I don't know that it really matters unless we're arguing for or speaking about a specific God and how this God is interacting with us today. Otherwise, it's just a lot of philosophical um, arguments spinning round and round and coming to no really useful conclusions. Now, that's probably not the answer you were looking for, so maybe Shannon will give you one that might fit your wheelhouse a little better, but that's <laughs> kind of where I land with this particular argument. Okay, okay can so, I respond to that? Well, I have a completely different okay. response. If you want to go ahead, I go figured ahead. you would. <laughs> maybe she you has both of them. Yeah. She has the correct response. Mine well, was just me. If it's different, can I, can I can yeah, respond sure. to this one first? Yeah, is, sure. that, is that okay? Okay. Well, I'm, but I know it's Dave, right? Let's make sure I get your name right. Yeah. David, right? Yeah, it's right there on the screen. Dave, oh. yep. <laughs> I, I, I believe that the, the first, your first premise that it doesn't matter, we're taught, that's what we're talking about. The existence of, of God and first cause. <clears throat> no, that, that that's what you're matter. talking about. And mm -hmm. then, no, that's what, that's what the subject is, the existence of God. And how we came into existence because we are dependent. And I think you're missing my point, though. It, it, yeah. Okay. We came into existence. Yes. Say, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me ask a question. So, are you just saying it doesn't matter to you? I'm saying, yeah, for sure, it doesn't matter to me. But I think, in the broader scope of things, in in terms of, in terms of the lives we're living on the earth today and humanity, it what does how does it affect you in your daily life? whether or not you understand the origins of the universe and how God started everything. 
how does that affect you from day to day? If it's not a specific God it, that's it calling you to worship him. To... Well, well, I th again, let's, you're... let's hear it. Let's, you've responded to me. Let's hear what, let's hear what, what Shannon has to say. I think, I think I may have derailed where okay, you wanted to go with this. Go <laughs> I, you didn't. Yeah, so that's okay. Go ahead, Shannon. My, my response is going to be like a little bit different. So it's, Whenever I hear, you know, contingency type arguments, it, it it's it seems as though essentially what they're trying to do is just um, stop an infinite regress, right? So you're just trying to prevent an infinite regress of causality from happening. So it's not clear. To I don't me need that to prevent that. prevent that. Time prevents it. Sorry, but I mean, well, let's let's time in its current instantiation. Let's, but allow me to. I'll keep going. <laughs> let's let Shannon talk, okay? Let, yeah. So it's, right, it, it seems as though that. Interrupt. You guys. Will right. So we feel I, as though that there needs to be, if we're if we're talking about like within time as it as it exists in its instantiation now, then you're saying that there needs to be one point at which things initiated, and like that's the the best that I can I can get out of this argument is that there's a there's a, an initial starting point. The problem for me is the insertion of cognition. Like you mentioned initially, like your definition of like what God is entailed free will and free will would would require a mind and some sort of cognition and intentionality. So if that is the case, that there is, you know, that, that there is, you know, a prime mover that has some sort of intentionality towards doing this, then I, I guess my next question would be like, what is your definition of god because if you see god as like a wholly self-sustained you know fully contented like a wholly perfect being then there would be no requirement to create because you would have had no desires or needs and in order to to create the entirety of the universe that would be indicative to me that he had a desire of some sort yeah. in order to have the have the inclination to do so and somebody who is wholly self-sustaining and perfect would have no such inclination so it seems to be self-defeating if that's the case if that's not your definition of god it doesn't even require a defeater to me for me not to hold to it because essentially you're just getting back to the very beginning of time as we knowing it saying something kicked it off and then labeling that god uh, and then you've got all of the hard work to do from there yeah. to get to why that God comports with the definition. Well, that that's you gave. exactly what I said, Shannon. You just said it a different way. <laughs> <laughs> I just almost peed my pants. <laughs> well, the, because the point is the same. If you're not defining what this God is and who this God is and how he interacts with us, it's an irrelevant conversation. But I didn't. I didn't intend to. I know, <laughs> but what's the point then? <laughs> And I started off that way. I told you I wasn't okay. going to do that. Well, respond, not, respond to episode. Shannon. Because Shannon just I'm lost. Not it. okay over here. We've, we've, <laughs> we've, we've lost <laughs> Shannon. Uh, oh, respond God, to what Shannon like... said. Respond to what Shannon said, Kelly. Respond okay. to what Shannon said. Okay, so Shannon, you you <laughs> insinuated and tell me if tell me if I got that wrong. That okay. time wasn't really real. No, I didn't insinuate that at all. I don't think so either. No, <laughs> no, not at all. You not said, at all. You said you said you said, something, you said about time. The, and current I'm, instantiation, I'm but... basing some of my argument on we do have a time frame. It had a start. I do, I'm not. I'm not to, contesting I'm that. Sorry, I never contested that, like like, that at all. Mark. No, it didn't. It, it, in fact, I you, incorporated you I into my response the assumption that time existed by saying that essentially you're just like you. You're saying that there can be no infinite regress because of time. So because now that I know that about right. you and your and your argument, what I said was. What you're doing is naming the starting point god um so that that's not a contestation of that point no, so i'm allowing in my response well, I, for the existence of time actually, uh and i still my and my point still stands actually that wasn't my point i i didn't mention god i said time restricts infinite regression that's yeah I, right sure there's no yeah, such so thing allowing, as infinite regression allowing, therefore right. let me just well, let me just finish because I listened to you guys interrupting at least not very much. Um, so if there if there's no infinite regression, then what's the alternative? If there's no I, I allowed for that in my response, though. So, like, this makes limited. me feel like you didn't hear what I was time is limited. saying. Both, because I allowed for that in my response. Like I granted that in my response. 
I granted that in my response. Well, I, mean, I mean, I listened to you, and I didn't. I, re- I listened to you. I didn't interrupt. But now you're telling me so, I said something I didn't. So I'm interrupting you to correct you because it sounds like you didn't listen to my response because you're attributing things to me that I neither said and have said multiple times throughout. Well, actually, that I don't that I don't acknowledge and actually you did I've granted and don't you, contest. But you're you're acting as though not only I was, did I contest them, I didn't grant them, but that I said something entirely different than I did. So that's I'm I'm interrupting because that's it's yes. it's the, the, <laughs> there's there's no progressing if you didn't listen to what the, what I had to say and you're trying to tell me that I said something different. Why well, I I am listening and what I'm trying to say is that you guys in, okay. inserted God again, and all I said was time restricts infinite regression. So therefore, okay. there is a first cause. Right, and, and the first that. cause, sure. if it's if it's argument. not dependent, which if it's first, then it can't be dependent. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you have infinite regression. The first mm-hmm. cause is independent. Sure. Not I'll, I'll grant that. Truth. Okay, so now and what? Then intentionality, why is it God? Intentionally, yeah, why... you were confused as to why... I'm Let me confused. just finish. You were confused as to why God would be intentional <sighs> and why, why he would make creation if he's, as you say, holy. Why, why wouldn't he? You said he wouldn't. Not... Why would he? And I would ask, why wouldn't? But he? why did I say he? Why did I say he wouldn't? And I, I gave two different scenarios actually. But yeah. no, you why, tell her let's do a listening to, test. Why tell her once did again I what say? She said. Tell her once why again did what I she said. say that it doesn't make sense that he would? Why did? Why? That's, that is that is what you said. Why would? Yeah. Why? 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 And that's in that one of the two scenarios why that not? I laid out. So you didn't yeah. listen to what I said. You can't repeat back to me what I said. I did. Or you don't yes. want to. Yeah, I did, actually. Okay, I... why then? Why did I say that? Why? Repeat my, why? <laughs> why did I say that? I don't know. That's your, that's your mind, not mine. I, you I, did, so, so you don't, you don't know what I said. <laughs> you want to tell her what she said, you but you know didn't what... listen to what she said. You don't know what I said. I laid out a scenario for one conceptualization of God, and that conceptualization of God is one that is wholly self-sustaining. Right. So a holy self-sustaining God would be perfectly content, would be perfectly happy, would be per- all of the perfects. Right. And if you are a holy self-sustaining and already perfectly happy, there is no logical reason. And in fact, it would be intuitively the opposite of a logical reason for them to desire to create anything new or additional because as they exist in their inter- eternal instantiation, they are already wholly content and perfect. So it doesn't make sense that they would have the inclination to do so. And intentional to create something. But you're just making what? that up in your head. That's your opinion. Oh, why? Okay. That's your opinion. You don't have any. Back- it's a lot of philosophers' opinions too. Actually, you're, you're, making <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> you're making assumptions. Yes, I'm not making saying, an well, assumption. I'm making an argument as to why it doesn't make sense. He doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. Well, that's that's your that's your opinion. That's not bad. So why? So it's a, it's a philosophical argument. So you you would have to demonstrate. You would have to like now. You have to demonstrate that there would be like that. I so. That takes away the holy contented, right? Because it's a refutation. Like th- this God, if he is wholly perfect and self-sustaining and wholly content, there is no reason to require anything additional. In fact, the addition of anything, no like his desire to do anything, allow me to finish, because I don't think you're understanding, the addition of anything, his having a desire for anything, means that he is not already wholly content, contented and self-sustained. That creation is a refutation to that attribute of God, should you want to give him that attribute, is what I am saying. And that's you're saying that's an assertion, argument. and I'm saying it's a logical deduction. Yeah. Tell me why that's not illogical. Okay, why that's you're not, not logical. making any better argument than Robin did. You're not making any better <laughs> argument than Robin did. <laughs> and my premise was, and my premise uh... was, and choose to do so, and has free will and intention. That was my argument. And right, and I'm saying, saying it doesn't make said sense. it doesn't make he... sense <laughs> for a perfect, complete being to do that. It Tell us why it does make sense. Okay, why does it make sense to you, Kelly? Why does it make sense to you? 
Because there's evidence here that, in fact, he did. What our evidence? Our universe is designed for life, number one. Oh, Our dear universe God. is designed for life to exist. That's the <sighs> anthropic principle. It's a gift. I know. I, I think that you Second, don't have a reputation for that. Secondly, so now you're back to asserting that there, there must be a God. Like the universe existing is evidence for God. Okay. Well, if you give God these attributes so that it doesn't make the sense, trees, the universe Shannon. would exist. And you're saying, well, the universe existing is the evidence. And like, this, like we'll just keep going around and around in circles because you're saying universe existing is evidence. Then I'm saying, if you give God these attributes, it doesn't make sense that he would even create a universe. And you're saying, well, obviously exists because the universe does. And we could do this for the rest of my We've life. We've been looking for evidence. And we're we already over it. time and trees. we have one more call to take. <laughs> so thank you for the conversation, Kelly. Um, I think we've reached the natural terminus of, of, of where we're going to butt for today. So maybe call back the next time I'm on and we can continue. So yep. thank you very Thanks much. Have calling. a good rest of your day. <sighs> okay. Was you I got making this. sense? Was, was I making sense? Yes. I felt like I was um, making sense. Does that always matter on this show? No. <laughs> Sometimes I don't explain things well, but I feel like I got you that did. one. You did. Okay. He just didn't <laughs> that he was locked into a position and he thought he had his he thought he had us backed into a corner and he didn't want to let you escape with a philosophical argument. But That's all. <laughs> it was an assertion. I was just thinking okay. Yeah. Anyway, I have an announcement. Oh boy. <laughs> We have a brand new store. I have some stuff from the store. It's actually a pretty wicked store. Uh, it's tiny.cc forward slash merch ACA. Yeah, Dave does as well. I got one of those uh, on right now. Do you? Look I at do. You. Well, I've got my crew shirt on. You can't get one of these at the store. You have to earn one of these by making announcements as good as I do. So good luck, everybody, because I'm amazing. <laughs> you can get your favorite items like T-shirts and hoodies and coffee mugs, and you can check out brand new items like beanies and cell phone cases and tote bags. We even now feature a very special limited edition item each month. So be sure to check out our store and the stores of all of our other shows. And right below the chat, you will notice there is a Donate Now box. Don donations made there mean that the ACA will get 100% of the proceeds. YouTube does not take a cut, and it's the best way to support us. And finally, we want to send a big thank you to the crew. <laughs> <laughs> they there put they this are. show together every week and they're the they're the reason that I show up every time because they're the best. It's certainly they not Dave. The work. They do all the it's work. It's certainly not Dave. I mean, not, I'm just glad here's Dave. so Dave's here to this, preemptively paraphrase the things I'm about to say. <laughs> this, this this show this show got a head a face plant from Shannon onto her desk. This was classic. <laughs> Hurt a little bit actually. It's uh, <laughs> just so frustrating. You beat right, yourself in laughter and you face planted. What a great <laughs> All right. We are going to talk to Zellini. All right. Zellini, we've only got a few moments. So hopefully we could have this conversation quickly. And I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Please correct me if I'm incorrect there. Uh, what would you like to talk about today? Yeah, uh, if it's only short, never mind then. Like, I would just point out the short, give a short comment if I can about uh, the previous call. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, don't you have, do you have an, an, anything new to discuss? Or, well, I mean, you can, you can point I, out, I sure, do, whatever. But it's kind of long, so I do, but it's oh, kind of okay. long, so I'll call. Yeah, sorry. maybe for another call. So, yeah. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a short comment about. I, I think he didn't really explain it well on the, or didn't have a counter argument. I mean, I don't believe in the perfect Christian God, the only God that he probably believes in. But right. what usually Christians say is something like that um, God doesn't create uh, out of need for other beings. He, he's not lacking anything. He doesn't have a lack of like happiness. So that's why I do it, but he has like an inher inherent uh, trait of love and benevolence and wants like he wants to share things with other beings. So that's something like he, that. That he would be a want or a desire, but, though. Like it's just a repackaging to me. Yeah. Of a, of a want or a desire. No, but like even, I mean, it could be understand and be understood like that, but personally, I believe that even people can have like pure benevolent acts and thoughts. So like, shouldn't be, so, I mean, too weird to assume that God has them. So his pure benevolent act was that 
they're what like so to Too me creative. wouldn't that like, mean something beings, like, like his love in and of itself was you know required the addition of other entities in order to be fully actualized then in order to be the best no, no, version like of itself. A, not like a part of that character trait so to call it is to like want good for others like so if there are no yeah, others, yeah. and the problem of like, them then you then, deal with the then why suffering evil. though right yeah because yeah. that because that whole christian argument which i heard when i was a christian god was wanted to have fellowship with man so he you know the fellowship with the angels was created beings and he wanted man to freely fellowship and worship him the problem with that is okay. along with that well along with that because of the way god made the plan because he had to make it free will because there was no other option for this omnipotent god to do it along came free will and suffering and people dying and a few years into the plan he has to drown them all and then a, a, a good portion of them end up burning forever in hell. That's not a great plan if he's wanting to share love with a created humanity. That yeah. that plan falls apart on it on its like face. Like it couldn't be I, benevolent I, I because then there would the existence of suffering would be a refutation right. of that. Exactly. Right? Because it, no, no, it, it couldn't be a benevolent act if it incorporates any form of suffering. I agree with all of that. Actually, you probably see the title of like the topic that I called about. Yeah. <laughs> Next week or, no, that's a good or, yeah. thought experiment, so, though. It's good to see it through to like other yeah. ways of looking at the the counter to my point. At least you acknowledged my yeah. point. Thanks. <laughs> that means somebody understood what well, the fuck call I was in saying. Sometime we, call in again. We can give you more time for your call because it's, yeah, it's, so it'd be sorry. worth unpacking that. Yeah, we, we just ran out of time also, this time. Yeah. Half a minute. Interesting information also connected to your response to him about God well, being self-sufficient, the, yeah. the Aristotelian notion of, God, of unmoved gods as unmoved moors. And yes, in yeah. Aristotle, it's multiple of them. Like, uh, he actually says that when a God is unmoved, an unmoved moor, when he is so self-sufficient, he doesn't actually interact with the world. Like, he is not right. the uh, efficient cause of the world. He is the final cause. So the heavenly spheres, their movement is caused by the unmoved mover, not as an efficient cause, but as a final cause. Like the spheres of heaven move because they want to imitate some sort of intellectual movement of the unmoved mover. Like they're inspired by him. So like that's like yeah. the unmoved mover, according to Aristotle, doesn't actually create in the sense that we use the word creation. Well, that is interesting. And yeah. I wish we had more time. I feel bad, but call, yeah. back, call back, please. I know we went way over time. We'll but make sure thank you, get you very on. much. Thank and you, Zelini. Yeah, you'll, yeah, we'll give you some yeah. priority next time. Thanks, Zelini. Have a good day. Bye. Dave, we did it. We got. I think it's we just such it. a show. We had two, maybe three proofs of God on this show. That on this show alone, and God so. Himself. God Himself showed up. God so Himself a, showed up, and I'm still an atheist. This is a big show. This is a big show. <laughs> God, nailed it. I don't know. I'm Can you believe they tried to keep us apart? I'm wavering a bit. Do you believe this? I know. They, ha. Good luck oh, next Jassy. time. Jassy. Yeah, well, <laughs> too bad, everyone. <laughs> Dave and I host. We finally did it. We it. finally did it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Click all the links and do all the stuff. Go back and re-listen to the announcements because that was the best part of the show. I nailed it, it every was. time. You're the best at that. You're the best at that. <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best at being the best. Thanks, and everybody. as always, everyone, help elevate the discourse. Bye. Bye. -bye.
It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callsex.